Thyroid patients think I'm being facetious when I say that if you aren't careful, your thyroid will steal your beauty. I'm not. And the thyroid's effect on collagen is a perfect example of why that is. Thyroid hormones are known as stimulators of collagen, which means if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, your collagen production will suffer. Given collagen's important role in maintaining the structures that impact your physical appearance, it's easy to see why thyroid problems accelerate the aging process. Don't worry though, because this problem can be halted or even reversed, provided you treat your thyroid and replace that damage or lost collagen. Before we talk about that though, let's dive into some of the signs and symptoms that may indicate you don't have enough collagen. And first on that list is the wrinkling of your skin. Collagen's role in the skin is simple. Keep it supple, plump, firm, and hydrated. As collagen levels decline, so too does the quality and texture of your skin. One of the first signs of thyroid-related collagen decline is the appearance of wrinkles, faster than you would have otherwise expected them to appear. Everyone will get wrinkly skin, there's no stopping that. But if you see those wrinkles creep up within proximity to when you had your thyroid condition diagnosed, then you know there may be a connection between the two. Improving your thyroid will help prevent the future loss of collagen, but it may not fix the rapid decline that has already occurred. In order to do that, you will need to fix and optimize your thyroid, but you'll also need to replace that lost collagen, but more on that in just a minute. The second sign is less mobility and less flexibility. Collagen's role in your body is to maintain the structure and function of whatever tissue it's a part of. We know that about 80% of the dry weight of tendons and ligaments is made up of collagen. So it's no surprise that a decline in collagen will negatively impact both your tendons and ligaments. A common problem with patients with thyroid disorders is a stiffness or pain in the joints and in the muscles. These symptoms are thought to be related to a thyroid-related condition called hypothyroid myopathy. But given that muscles, tendons, joints, and ligaments are all connected in some way, it makes sense that some of this pain that hypothyroid patients experience is probably related to a loss or decline in collagen as well. Number three on the list is joint pain. Joint pain, fortunately, is not as common as muscle pain among thyroid patients. But for those people who do have it, it can be very hard to treat. The joint pain that seems to accompany a loss in collagen seems to be secondary to a decline in cartilage around the joints. Collagen is the tissue that prevents your joints from grinding against each other by absorbing shock and friction. When people say they have bone on bone in their joints, this is what they're really referring to, a loss in cartilage. Due to the action that thyroid hormone has on collagen and therefore cartilage, those with thyroid problems will experience an acceleration in this bone-on-bone -bone type of arthritis. Number four are gastrointestinal problems. Collagen is needed by the body to ensure the function of the cells that line the inside of your gut. And these cells act as a defense mechanism to prevent intruders from going inside your gut to your body. When collagen is low, this defense system doesn't work as well, which leads to increased permeability. And you've probably heard of this condition, even if you don't recognize it by this name, because sometimes we refer to it as having a leaky gut. When your gut is more permeable, it sets the stage for the development of multiple medical conditions, including problems like hormone imbalances, gut overgrowth syndromes, and even the development of nutrient deficiencies. Thyroid patients are already more prone to developing gut problems due to how thyroid hormone impacts the gut. So when you add on a collagen deficiency on top of this, you just set the stage for even more gut problems. Five is a weakening of the muscles and slower muscle recovery. The amino acids that are found inside of collagen are different from those that your body needs and uses to build muscle. But that doesn't mean that collagen isn't important for muscle health. Studies have shown that people who use collagen supplements experience more rapid recovery after they work out. Believe it or not, scientists don't know exactly why this happens, but they believe it probably has something to do with the fact that collagen supports the tissues that surround and enclose the muscles. Either way, if your body is having a hard time recovering after workouts, then low collagen may be the problem. Number six has to do with your hair. And your hair is really just an extension of your skin, which is why things that cause problems with your skin also tend to cause problems with your hair. We've already discussed how collagen can impact the quality of your skin, and it has a similar impact on your hair. It does this by supporting the disulfide bonds, which prevent the breakage of your hair. 
As collagen levels decline, you will see a reduction in the sheen and shine of your hair, and you will probably notice that you see your hair breaking more frequently. Number seven on the list is an increase in cellulite. Cellulite, of course, is that dimpling of the skin that occurs as you build up subcutaneous fat underneath the skin and pull it down. This process creates that dimpling that so many people are concerned with and try to get rid of. But what's really interesting about this dimpling is that you don't need a lot of fat for it to occur. And we know this because we see cellulite in even people who are lean and have a lot of muscle. In this way, the presence of subcutaneous fat may have more to do with the quality of your skin as opposed to just how much subcutaneous fat is present. When collagen is around in sufficient amounts, it helps to fill in the gaps which prevents the dimpling and therefore prevents cellulite. Studies also show that people who take collagen supplements do experience some reduction in fat loss, which is probably why it also helps to reduce cellulite. And number eight on the list is blood pressure and circulatory issues. The more collagen that you have inside of your arteries, the more pliable and soft they will be. And whether you realize it or not, you actually do want your arteries to be soft and pliable because when they are stiff, it increases your blood pressure and can increase your risk of other conditions. As collagen levels decline, you may see a rise in your blood pressure, which will then cause an increase in risk of plaque and potentially coronary artery disease. That's all good, but how can you fix it? Let's say you're a thyroid patient and you've noticed many of these same symptoms. What are you supposed to do now? The answer is actually really easy. Replace the collagen you've already lost and make sure you take steps to slow down the further progression and further loss of more collagen. We'll talk about how to replace collagen in just a second, but for now, let's talk about how to prevent future loss. No matter what you do, you're going to lose collagen over time. There's nothing you can do about that. But the rate at which you lose collagen is something that you have control over. We know from research that there are several factors that can accelerate how much collagen degrades over time. And as long as you understand these factors, you can stop them by just doing the exact opposite. Based on some solid evidence, here's what we know causes a decline in collagen. Hypothyroidism or low thyroid function, smoking, ultraviolet light exposure, alcohol consumption, sugar consumption due to the creation of advanced glycation end products, a lack of sleep, and a lack of exercise. All of these are modifiable risk factors because you can do something about them. For instance, if you're worried about the sun, just wear some sunscreen. If you're worried about sugar, cut it from your diet and the list goes on and on. While you can do a lot to prevent the loss of future collagen, what are you supposed to do about the collagen that has already been lost? For that, you need some different treatments. Luckily, it's actually really easy to replace lost collagen because of collagen supplements. And by far, the best way to get collagen into your body is with the use of collagen peptides. Collagen is too big of a compound, so you can't absorb it whole. But what you can do is you can take that collagen and break it up into smaller chunks called peptides, and these peptides can get absorbed through the gut. These peptides are small chains of amino acids that can get absorbed, and we know from studies they actually make their way to the places like your joints where your collagen needs to be repaired. These peptides come in all different sizes and varieties, but specific ones have been studied for their effects on certain tissues. Verisol, for instance, has been studied for its effects on the skin. For the bone, for its effects on the bone. And for the gel, for its effects on tendons and ligaments. These are the peptide combinations that I personally recommend and take myself, but you can use whatever you want. If you are somebody who doesn't like the idea of taking a collagen supplement, you can still get some from your diet. In general, the same tissues in humans that contain high amounts of collagen are also the same in animals. And if you eat those types of foods, you will actually be consuming their collagen that your body can then use. For instance, when you boil a chicken carcass, all of the collagen that's found in the bones and the tendons and the ligaments will seep out into the bone broth that you can then drink and use as a source of collagen. And if you don't like that idea, then you can also get collagen by just consuming chicken with the skin on or organ meats. I personally think it's easier to just take 20 grams of collagen peptides each day, but if you like the idea of getting it from your food, you have that option as well. What's amazing about replacing lost collagen is that you can see results in as little as 30 days of daily use. When it comes to the skin, some studies have shown that you can see a reduction in wrinkles in as little as 30 days of use. Collagen related benefits to bones and cartilage can take longer, but benefits to the gut can be seen in just a few days. 
Given the sheer number of benefits that replacing lost collagen can provide, it makes the short list of supplements that just about every single thyroid patient should consider using. It won't necessarily improve your thyroid directly, but it will help to get rid of some of those pesky symptoms that tend to hang around even after you've optimized your thyroid medication. And a lot of these improvements can be seen in the mirror, which makes them really easy to track. Collagen is a great supplement if you have a thyroid problem, but there are plenty of other good supplements out there. And if you want to see a list of those, make sure you check out this video next.